Welcome to this presentation in which I consider the implications of farm-free corridors on wild salmon migration routes. In October 2019, the salmon farming company Maui announced plans to close their farm in Loch Yew in the northwest of Scotland. The Loch Yew farm has long been blamed for the collapse of the sea trout fishery in the adjacent Loch Marie. This graph, published in a paper by Butler and Walker in 2006, suggests that the farm is implicated in a fall in sea trout catches as a consequence of sea lice infestation. The local fishery trust has been sampling wild sea trout in Loch Yew at a site at Boar Bay, which is near the mouth of the River Yew. This sampling site has been used as part of a wider national programme of sea lice monitoring. This is the sea lice data for Boar Bay from the national programme run by the Rivers and Fisheries Trust of Scotland from 2011 to 2015. Prevalence is the percentage of fish in the sample affected by lice. Abundance is the mean number of sea lice per fish in the whole sample. And intensity is the mean number of lice per infected fish. It can be seen that both prevalence and abundance are high when the sample size is small. In 2015, a third of the fish sampled carried lice, but with an average count of less than one. More recent data comes from the Sky and Wester Ross Fishery Trust reports. Again, the small sample sizes in 2016 and 2017 distort the prevalence and abundance data. The data since 2018 has not yet been published. Meanwhile, counts of adult female sea lice at the Loch Yew farm have been low throughout 2020. The farm was left to fallow for much of the previous year and in 2018 there was just one count of over two lice. This was for one month only during the winter months, according to data from the Scottish Salmon Producers Organisation website. This would suggest that any sea lice from the Loch Yew farm have not been a threat to local stocks of wild salmon and sea trout. There is a belief amongst those promoting the cause of wild salmon that if salmon farms, such as the Pitchard Farm at Loch Yew, are removed, then wild salmon stocks in the local area will quickly recover. This is a widely held view across all salmon farming areas. At the end of 2018, the Office of the Canadian Premier announced a programme of farm closures in the Broughton Archipelago that aimed to protect and restore wild salmon stocks in the area. The intention was to create a farm-free migration corridor to enable wild salmon to reach the sea without passing near to any salmon farm. This slide shows the affected farms and the dates they were planned for closure. Despite this ongoing closure programme, there appears to be an unwillingness by some to wait and see what impacts result from these closures. In June 2020, British Columbia's First Nations Leadership Council released details from a report produced by fish farm critic Alexandra Morton. The report states that high numbers of sea lice during the spring of 2020 are the result of fish farms dotted along the migration routes. The report is published by the Salmon Coast Field Station, which was established by Alexandra Morton in 2006 to study what she described as a lice epidemic on wild salmon. At the time this presentation was put together in August 2020, this year's report was still not available for public consultation. However, similar reports for the years 2016 to 2019 are published on the Salmon Coast Research Station website. This slide is taken from the 2016 report. It shows the migration routes in blue. Farms are identified by yellow squares and sampling sites are shown by the asterisks. The farms of interest are named and these are Glacier Falls, Birdwood and Wicklow. The farm furthest away from the open sea is Glacier Falls. These are the lice counts expressed as prevalence on both wild pink and chum salmon sampled near the Glacier Falls salmon farm for the four years from 2016 to 2019. These are from left to right. The main point arising from the 2019 data is that the fish sampled from the glacier site have relatively high lice counts, 
even though the report clearly states that the glacier farm had shut down that year. If there were no fish in the farm, where were these lice coming from? Certainly there's no other farm upstream from the glacier site. Alexandra Morton has distributed the results from the 2020 sampling to selected organisations, but has yet to make this data freely available. Living Oceans report that according to the 2020 findings, lice levels are low with 1.3 lice per fish and an infestation rate of 34%. The report also states that this is the first migration following on from the closure of six farms in the area. In 2018, when the farms were stocked with fish, the infestation rate of sample fish was also 34%. Just to clarify, at the time of the 2020 migration, both the Glacier Falls and Birdwood sites had closed, and whilst the Wicklow farm was still in situ, it had not been stocked with fish, so was empty and lying fallow. This meant that the whole corridor of the Tribune Channel was clear of all farm salmon. Whilst Alexandra Morton and her team sample sites around the Broughton archipelago, they are not the only ones to do so. The salmon industry has commissioned an independent company, Mainstream Biological Consulting of Campbell River, to sample sites across all of the local salmon farming areas in British Columbia, and they have done so since 2015. The results are freely available for public consultation. Although Alexandra Morton's data has not yet been published, the data from mainstream biologicals has. It can be seen that the prevalence for both chum and pink salmon is 22%. The abundance is around 0.3 to 0.37 and the average intensity from 1.3 to 1.6. What is most interesting is when this latest data is compared against that from previous years, there is some variation between species, but the numbers are not hugely different. The key point, though, is that in 2020, there were no farms operating along the central migration route, yet the lice counts are largely unchanged from previous years. The previous slides summarise the data from all the sampling sites in the Broughton archipelago. The top half of this slide shows the lice counts on the sampled wild chum and pink salmon just at those sites along the now farm-free Tribune Channel. The percentage prevalence for chum, for example, ranges from 23.8% to 60%, with an average of 42.2%. The bottom table compares the results of sampling from the Tribune Channel with other farming areas in British Columbia. Despite there being no farms, the Tribune Channel has the second highest infestation of all the areas monitored by mainstream biologicals. Returning to Scotland, I would now like to consider the findings of a study from 2010, which compared lice counts from three sites on the east coast of Scotland where there are no salmon farms, with that of the River Carron on the west coast. Sampling was undertaken between 2005 and 2007, and it can be seen that the East Coast sites showed relatively high sea lice infestations on wild sea trout compared to those from the West Coast River Carron. The overall message arising from the findings is that even in places where there are no salmon farms, or in those areas where salmon farms have been removed, there can be substantial sea lice infestations. This is not unexpected because sea lice are a natural parasite that have infested salmon and sea trout in the wild for millennia. These parasites occur in the marine environment regardless of the presence of salmon farming. However, no one ever perceived lice to be a problem before salmon farming became established, so there was no incentive to look for them or study their natural life cycle. There is now an automatic belief that sea lice and salmon farming are inextricably linked, but they're not. Naturally occurring sea lice infest wild salmon and sea trout wherever they exist. It is just that there's been a readiness to blame salmon farming regardless. This is not to say there could be some interaction, but clearly the results from Canada show that lice infestations can be high even when there are no salmon farms present. The reality is that the removal of the farm in Loch Hugh will make very little difference to the number of wild sea trout in Loch Marie in future years. This is because sea lice from salmon farms are not the primary reason why wild fish numbers have declined along Scotland's west coast. Thank you for watching this presentation.